Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, I am showing you a couple of really, really interesting combo lines um, that I kind of just messed around with on EDO Pro last night at like 3 a.m. Um, messing around with the new Splite archetype. Really, really cool archetype. I, it, it seemed like it had some potential, and then messing around with it, it absolutely has potential. Um, I really think that, like, especially depending on how ban lists go and if, if certain stuff gets hit, this deck could actually be, like pretty pretty freaking legit and if not i'm still okay with that because it is at very at the very least going to be like a really spicy rogue deck which is more in my alley anyway so uh gonna go through a couple of test uh kind of just like lines that i went through uh testing out a bunch of the different stuff that we had looked at um in the other video where i was looking at cards that could splash in with this archetype so let's start off with one of the the highly touted ones being live twins we'll just run through this combo here so just just as a a basis here um we're opening any of the live either of the live twins right as a starter and then i actually have the worst splite extender this is the only splite extender that almost offers no other value aside from just being a, a guy that jumps on the board so just to show you how far you can go with just these two we'll do this so obviously kissy kill gets the lilla then we special him um we're gonna go ahead and make uh, the gigantic splite now we're actually gonna oh here's another thing i'm also showing off the hero kid in this combo line um, because you make this guy and he summons any level two from the deck and it doesn't have, um, it doesn't negate the effects or anything. He just says that you're, you're locked into rank twos, level twos, and link twos for the rest of the turn. But hero kid does trigger here. I did want to confirm that and make sure he isn't missing timing or anything. Um, so we're going to summon hero kid. He's going to get the other two copies out and just look at how far I've gotten with just two cards already. Let's keep this going. We're going to make our splite elf. Then we're going to link into the, uh, evil twin kissy kill. Make an IMP Mascarena and then Reborn to go into Lilla to go to Reborn, get a draw, and then we're going to end on um, another copy of Kiss a Kill so we can get the quick Reborn for the Lilla and Grape. That will be a pretty much a Dryden effect on the opponent's turn. We also have um, the Elf on the field, which is going to get a Reborn from Grave. We have multiple things in Grave that could be Reborn there. And we have IP Mascarena. We are not going to be locked on our opponent's turn, just our own turn. So you could even make Appaloosa, Unicorn, you know, whatever else. Um, and of course, we drew a card during the process, which is also pretty sweet. Um, so honestly, like pretty insane value, all things considered. And it's why I think the Live Twin variant might end up being the best variant because it plays under the Link 2s pretty well it had the, the way you have to sequence everything is a little bit weird but it, it usually ends up working out where like you can still just do the whole kissy kill thing or the whole the whole evil twin line except for making the link four i think that's the only thing that you don't get to do turn one so you're doing like old evil twin live twin plays but um they actually do work out pretty well all right let's get back here um just moving on from here let's show off the kitten this is like a super basic like thing so this is another card to consider deep sea diva it's a one card rank two but the main thing i wanted to show off was kitten um wind up kitten you'll see here um it's it's pretty basic but like ideally this is like a going second or like in the middle of a duel like later turns being able to go into this is like so strong so we're gonna again make this exit and we're gonna summon the wind up kitten straight from deck Wind Up Kitten just says, target one monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand. This can be used once while this card is faced up on the field, not once per turn. So because this deck has a generic reborn for any level two, you're going to summon it here, use it to bounce something. Then you're going to link these two off of the link two, and the link two is going to reborn the kitten again. Boom. Use his effect, bounce something again. Really solid, really strong, um, and it just kind of shows that off. I think Kitten is like potentially a one of in the deck. Um, I guess it depends on like how good the deck because the deck seems to have a lot of defense but not a ton of like active removal so playing something like kitten does give us uh, solid access to stuff like that I just imagine like a scenario where like post side you draw like dark ruler no more and you just like completely turn off your opponent's board then you just do this bounce two and if you had any any other extender then you're actually going to go much further as well it's pretty cool um, so there's the kitten stuff uh, let's look at the I guess the spell book stuff is pretty cool here um, this is pretty simple. So this is just uh, the Magician of Prophecy, or this could be Secrets, with... I have blue here. This is, like, one of the better starters, for sure. So we're just going to summon the blue boy. We're going to search a Secrets. We're going to go ahead and get into the Splite stuff. Go blue, search Jet. Jet, search um, this card, Starter. And then Starter is going to go ahead and get red. So now we're actually... That is the fourth summon, by the way. And we are now Nibiru-proof with red uh, live on the field, which is insane. 
Um, and if our opponent tries to Nibiru us, the only thing that that really changes for this combo is that you probably just end up using red to tribute the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. It does take away your draws, but you still kind of just end on the same board, which is still pretty decent. So we're going to make the, the Gigantic Splite summon out Carrot because we want to end on both negations. And then we'll just make the um, Splite Elf and Reborn Carrot. So now we've got Spell and Trap Negate, Monster Negate, and we're going to finish up by sending Blue Boy to draw uh, or get get knowledge and then send blue boy to draw two um pretty simple but it's another engine i i'm, I'm honestly not entirely sure what people are going to end up uh you know getting magnetized to as far as like what supplementary engines but the deck absolutely needs something else i don't know if it's going to be frogs we'll look at those in a sec i don't know if it's going to be something like spell books i don't know if it's going to be because there's a lot of consistency with spell books the searchability the only problem is like with knowledge is is <laughs> none of our the archetype we're using is spellcaster so you kind of have to see blue by otherwise knowledge is like a straight up full-on brick but that's cool uh next up here oh let's look at the cyber dragon one this was another one i thought was cool because core is like a one card interruption and it's a level two on the field um there are some other level twos that get you value but he gets you like he's a one card search you into an interruption immediately so and we have red here as well so let's go into core core searching the overflow special red make gigantic we're going to use him to summon blue. And this is what's so crazy, is if like you don't open blue, but you just open a way into the rank two, you just go summon blue, blue get jet. Then as you see, you go summon jet, jet search another extender in the quick play, and now the quick play can get us into uh, red or carrot, whichever we don't have that we want to add to our board. So now we end on uh, the, this play. This is really cool. So this is another card I get to show off here. Some Summer Summoner is really sweet to add to the board. He can quick effect and discard a card to reborn a thunder. So because we don't have Carrot on the field, we can um, we can use him to like quick effect reborn Carrot or Blue. Because we, now we have both of these on the field. So we have two reborns on the opponent's turn. One's going to be for Carrot to get a spell and trap negate. The other one's probably going to be for Blue to search another monster. Um, and just have like ridiculous amounts of follow-up also add another monster to the field that we contribute for red and carrots effects for the negations we also have set overflow and core in the grave so three interruptions with follow-up off of just those two cards you really get really solid value out of this deck with, with like two card combos and there's even a couple one card combos the one card rank twos pretty much um next up let's look at the mutants real quick and then we'll finish up with like the frog one because that one's the most interesting one so for mutants specifically they have the bonus of being able to play something like emergency teleport um that could even be a bonus if you want to play something like gamma in the deck um you could just play e telly and then at least make a little bit of extra use of the gammas in your deck and their tuners so if you want to play something like Hulk, that's the one thing i didn't really show off here is like crazy Hulk lines but i honestly wasn't entirely sure what i was like looking for with those builds the only thing i could think of is like trying to end on dagda plus Hulk. that way you could tag Hulk out for um the wonder magician and then pop your own scythe but Honestly, I'd rather end on Spell and Trap Negate, Monster Negate with a set Cyber Emergency and most of these other boards I think are better than just putting all your resources into just setting up one Scythe lock and no other interruptions. I just think that loses to certain things. Like Flunder just dunks all over that. All right, but here we go. We're going to show off this. This is red again with Emergency Teleport. We're going to start with the Tele. We're going to summon out our Mutant MO5. This searches a monster. That'll be the new one, Mutant Mutant. Summon this one. Then we'll use this one to tribute itself to just summon beast straight out of the deck. That's our best option for an interruption if you're going to use this as a splashable engine. If it was a pure variant, you might want the spell negate instead, but we're just doing basic plays from there, right? Gigantic, get blue. Blue, get jet. Jet, get uh, the quick play spell. Go into link to reborn the red. Summon out carrot. And we're passing here with the beast on field, which I think he just says you have to... If your opponent activates a spell card or... If, oh, this is the spell negate. I'm sorry. I had them confused. If your opponent it activates a spell card or effect, you can um, banish one card from your hand or field, negate that activation if you do banish that card. Pretty decent. I mean, it's just a good spell negate. And if it's destroyed, you can get one of your banished traps, which we're not playing in this variant. I don't think this is, like, ideal. I mean, I guess you get some decent value, but having to send a, like, banish a card from hand or field obviously isn't ideal. But, I don't know, it's still a big body, which the deck really does struggle to get to. You get to a lot of small bodies, not a ton of big bodies, because you're locked into Link 2s, Rank 2s, and Level 2s a lot of the time. So, we, it's, it's a little bit harder for us to get into those big, bigger bodies. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of appreciated. 
Um, so mutants are fine. I don't think they're the best way because you probably have to play a couple more bricks than some of these other engines. And like Beast is not a level two and uh, Mutant Mutant is a level one. So if you have to activate a card that locks you early in your combo, you are just gonna be like in a really awkward position. Uh, so there we go and let's finish up with the water stuff here. So for this example, this is gonna be a way to make, this is like a one card rank two plus a water in hand. Um, and it's pretty cool because it just kind of lets you turbo into toad really early. If this archetype was water, oh my gosh. If this archetype was legit water instead of like dark and fire, like this would be insane. Uh, but pretty simple. We're going to go uh, diva into diva into gigantic. Then we're going to summon swap right out of the deck. That's so crazy. So the other interesting thing to note here as well is this combo is technically a one card um rank two plus a water but keep in mind if we didn't normal summon here uh and like maybe we just opened like uh e telly plus a splite or something like that and we made uh the rank two without normal summoning we could go summon frog swap add himself like add himself back to hand uh and then you normal summon swap again so like you wouldn't even like you wouldn't have used your normal summon so you can actually just add him and do it again it's really cool, but uh, because we have the water, we can actually just, uh, in that instance, you wouldn't need double uh, the extra water in hand. But because we do, we're going to add him back to hand, then we're going to pitch it to summon him again, send uh, another dupe, and then we're going to get things going here. We're going to reborn, make a toad, and we're going to pass on that. Not super great, all things considered. I think like this felt like it could have been something else, but I guess, I guess the main difference would be if we had gone through splites and it was like something like blue, and you were able to go like blue get jet, jet get the continuous uh, quick play spell, I mean, then you're probably ending on like the link to toad and probably red on the field, um, which is which is actually much better. And, and you have a follow up of like toad getting a summon on your opponent's standby phase and when he negates something or gets cleared from the field in general, he's getting you a toad, a frog monster back from grave. And you also have the ability to um, use the link to to revive something like blue that might be of grave to just get you another follow-up search so a lot of cool stuff i hope this gives you a good idea of like where the where the starting point is i know these deck these combos are not super like <laughs> one direction it's just kind of a lot of different options and that's what seems really cool about this because it it does seem like i can work with a lot of things the frogs are really cool but like you don't really want to draw dupe, right? We want to draw swap, not dupe. And we don't want to draw Ronin. So there are some awkward things in there, but I definitely think even just a normal summonable level two that doesn't even do anything can still actually be decent, like a dupe frog, um, just to make all the splice alive in hand. So we'll take those. Um, that's pretty much everything I have for today, though. Um, let me know in the comment section down below any other ideas, any other combo lines that you can think of and, and cards that definitely need to be tested. But this seems like a pretty great place to start out and uh you know mess around with combos from there a lot of potential for this archetype definitely really hyped for this one um but yeah i'm out of here thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't uh and and leave those thoughts down below i'll see you in the next one peace